And this is what I concluded. In the pre-operative management of patients with acute intracranial hemorrhage, high-dose mannitol reduces mortality, right? Like by a half, you know? Now, now I think how stupid I was, but, you know, a, a quite a reasonably precise and reduced disability by a half, right? Wow, that's a really effective treatment, you know? Head injury, you've got a patient with head injury and you give them this treatment, they're half as likely to die and half as likely to be disabled. Wow, that's great. So I published this and I was very happy about it. And then, uh, and then we were doing the CRASH-2 trial and I was at a meeting in, in, in South America and I met my friend Jorge Mejia, who was the Colombian national coordinator, and he said, oh, Ian, he was just, you know, just after the meeting, he said, Ian, you do know that all of the trials included in your meta-analyses were fabricated. <laughs> so I said, Jorge, right, of course I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, of course I didn't know they were all fabricated. He said, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the Julio Cruz, uh, we all knew him. He never did any research. Wow, so I had to go back. So Julio Cruz published all of the trials. So there were three reasonably sized trials for, for neurosurgery. Um, Julio Cruz published them all. And they were published in quite leading journals in head injury. So I thought, right, okay, I better investigate this. So I said, let's, let's find Julio Cruz. Now, he, uh, um, the address for correspondence at the bottom was the Comprehensive Center for Neuroemergencies, Sao Paulo. So, I don't know what you imagine when I say Comprehensive Center for Neuroemergency Sao Paulo. I imagined a building, yeah? I imagined a building with maybe a door that you walk into and perhaps a receptionist, uh, you know, to, to greet you. And then you say, I'm looking for Professor Cruz. And he said, oh, he's on the 10th floor or something like that. that that's what I expected. It didn't exist. There was no such... No tatemono. <laughs> there was nothing. There was no building at all, right? It was just a P.O. box. You know these little things with the key and you open it and you get your mail? It was, it was, there was no building at all. I, I wrote to the university and I said, um, I said, he, he was employed, he was a professor at the Federal University of Sao Paulo. So I wrote to the Federal University of Sao Paulo. I said, can you help me get in touch with Professor Cruz? He said, we don't have a Professor Cruz. So he's not a professor at our university. So all randomized trials in Brazil have to be approved by the Brazilian National Committee on Research Ethics. So I said, them, can you tell me, can you show me the ethics approvals for these trials? Those trials, we, we never approved those trials. So there was no, um, no evidence, that the, no, no evidence of ethics committee approval. But the, the trials, you see, they had co-authors. So I, I found it very difficult to contact Cruz, but he worked with two co-authors, Minoja, who, who was a doctor in, in, in Italy, and Okuchi, who was a doctor in Japan. So I thought, right, let's, let's find Minoja and Okuchi. And I, I, I managed to find them, and I wrote to them, and they wrote back. And... Um, I'll read you the Japanese one, because it, it, it's the most interesting, I think. Since I did not conduct any study related to the results of Dr. Cruz's high-dose mannitol trials in Japan, I have no data to present you. So it wasn't a multi-center. It wasn't like Brazil, Italy, uh, Brazil, Italy Japan. Um, I did not know any part of the paper before he called me about acceptance in the journal. Wow. That's interesting. So there's this man somewhere sitting in Japan who gets a call from Dr. Cruz and he says, good news, you've published a paper. <laughs> and, you know, and, Dr. and Mr. Okuchi says, uh, great, what was it about? <laughs> you know? So he didn't know anything about the paper and, and his colleagues and the other guys, the other co-authors, in, in Italy, said exactly the same thing, you know. Um, or, you know, 
uh, I, I basically helped him talk about the discussion, you know, but I don't know anything about the data. So basically, Dr. Cruz wrote these papers, sent them to these people he must have known in different parts of the world, and invited them to be co-authors, and they were, or I don't know if he did invite them to be co-authors, he just put them as co-authors and then told them that they were co-authors. Uh, but they knew, they knew nothing about it. So, he's not a professor, there's no building, there's no ethics research ethics committee approval. His co-authors don't know anything about the studies. So I wrote to the editor of the journal, and I said, right, okay. And I tried to contact the editor, and I missed him, and then I was trying to contact him by phone. I'm, he missed me, I missed him, and eventually he wrote to me in email. He said... Um, as you can see, we all doubted the data, but to doubt is different from concluding he fabricated the data. I thought he did, right? So this is the editor of the journal who published his results. He thought the data were fabricated. Oh, well, that's very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, but hoped that publication would encourage repetition. Wow, that's interesting, isn't it? So the editor of the journal receives your manuscript. He says, well, this is, this is a fake. Let's publish it. You know, I find that really, really, really surprising. And he wrote to me about this, and, and he was happy to put this in paper. So I found out later that Cruz committed suicide, right? He committed suicide in 2005. That was two years after we published this um, meta-analysis. Uh, his co-authors declined to retract the papers, right? So these papers, if you search PubMed, they're still there, right? They're still there looking like regular publications. Uh, but I, I, the, my friend Jorge Mejia was correct, they never happened. I'm almost certainly convinced they never happened. And then I tried to tell, I, try, I wrote to the editors of the journals who published the papers and asked them to retract them, and they declined as well. Right? So there is this evidence in the literature that everybody, you know, we, we know we can't trust, and they, nobody wants to pull it out. And they don't want to pull it out because it's a risk to them, you know? They just think it's a risk. It might... The fact that they published it looks embarrassing, um, that if we, if we try to retract it, um, somebody might complain. I, 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 was, I was really surprised. So that was the first time that I'd um, published fraudulent studies. And then it happened again. So this time, there's, um, I was very interested in fluid resuscitation. So you can give different fluids when patients are bleeding, and you can give starch, or you could give um, albumin, or different, different kinds of fluids you can, you can give. And I wanted to know which was the best. So we did a meta-analysis to compare, and it looked like, um, it looked like um, which is this, starch is albumin, death. Um, starch was slightly better. So there was these one, two, three, four, five trials by this author Bolt, a German author called Bolt. And um, he always, he did lots and lots of randomized trials. They always showed starch was um, slightly better. Uh, hang on, this is a, re is it relative outcome death? Oh, so starch is slightly worse, doesn't it? Anyway, but, um, Okay, no, slightly more, slightly more deaths in, in, the, uh, in the album, slightly fewer deaths in the albumin-treated group. And um, then it turned out that he'd been f fabricating these trials. So what happened is he, the journal Anesthesia and Analgesia published a study by him. Um, the editor gets peer review comments and says, you know, you know these these results are really incredible, I can't believe them. So the hospital makes an investigation and finds out that he's published 90 randomized trials that he didn't do. 
So 90 randomized trials. He didn't do any research. He didn't do randomized trials, but he sat in his office writing randomized trials, and he published them all. And they went through peer review and journals, you know, and, and everything was published, and they never happened. Um, so when we, dis when we discovered that 90 randomized trials by this guy were fraudulent, the British, the British guidelines on resuscitation had to be changed because it, it depended on his results, you know. So patients were being treated according to his advice, the results of his trials. And then, then they didn't happen. And, and, then, um, you know, and then when we published, JAMA published a meta-analysis like the one we published in the Cochrane Library that excluded his trials. And it got a different result. It didn't look that this treatment was safe and effective at all. It looked like this treatment was potentially harmful. So this is, this is twice now that, you know, so this Cochrane collaboration that I, uh, I was really in love with, and I'm finding, wow, look, this is not good. You know, this is, this is very bad. And then I got very suspicious about everything. And so we'd, we'd, I'd published, uh, I was interested in tranexamic acid in postpartum hemorrhage. And we were planning a trial. Before we planned the trial, we reviewed the evidence from previous trials. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe some of these trials were fabricated too. Maybe, maybe I'm not being suspicious enough in the past. Let's go back and do it again. So we went back and do it, did it again. And my colleague, Catherine Kerr, noticed something very interesting. This, this was one of the early trials in 2004 by um, a Chinese author, I think, called Guy. I think it was Chinese. And they made a mistake. In the, in, the, in the title of the publication. It's a, a prospective, randomized, case-controlled clinical trial, right? Now, that's a mistake. There are randomized, controlled trials, and there are case-controlled studies, but there are not randomized, case-controlled studies, right? That's a mistake. Could be, you know, it's an easy mistake to make. But the, in, the interesting thing was that she noticed that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven subsequent trials from different authors in different parts of the world, India, Turkey, Iran, different parts of the world, they made the same mistake. The same mistake in the title of the paper. Oh, what's going on there? You know, that's strange. So we thought, that's a bit suspicious. So we put all of these papers, you know, we, we got all of these papers, we printed them out, we put them on the floor, and we were going around on our hands and knees, you know, looking at these papers. And they had all the same words. You know, all the words are the same, you know. This is about um, tranexamic acid in caesarean section. Caesarean section rates have increased. They're, they're, they're all of, lots and lots, of, there were a few words that were different, but most of the words were the same. And then we... These are the trials where they have the same words, and most of the results were all the same as well. So these trials, different authors in different places, I just, they, didn't, they, they didn't happen. They just saw a trial, one of the early trials, and thought, oh, we can do that. We can copy that one. And so they copied them. So an author from Iran sees this paper from Guy and says, oh, we could have done that maybe in my hospital. So let's copy that, right? Send it for publication. It's published. Great. You know, very good. You know, line on the CV. <laughs> you know, contribution to science. Great. Um, now that's, that's like, in all of the trials, that's about a third of the trials. So like, you know, so it happened to me once, it happened to me again, then I was very skeptical, and then I find a third of the trials are, are probably fabricated. And you can do other things, like um, one of the interesting things you can do if you suspect that the studies included in your meta-analysis are not really randomized trials, is you can do a, a meta-analysis of the baseline variables, right? So you know how a randomized trial works. You, 
you randomly allocate patients to one group or the other, and if, if you've really randomly allocated them, on average, the two groups will be the same apart from the treatment on baseline characteristics. You shouldn't expect, you know, big differences in baseline characteristics. But when we did a meta-analysis of the baseline hemoglobin in all of these trials, it was much lower in one group than the other. You know, that, that shouldn't really happen. Um, you know, you shouldn't get a, you know, you could get it by chance. It could be a bad luck chance, but you shouldn't really get it. So, if you believe the trials, but once you start not believing the trials, then this starts to be information. So, you know, statistically significant differences, or, you know, the P less than P.01 difference, you know, they're probably not randomized. So I started talking to the Cochrane Collaboration about this. I said, look, a lot of these studies we're including in, in meta-analysis, these meta-analysis, they're just not real. And so what, what's your policy on fraud?